2,000 years ago, through the arrival of his son, God sent a message to the world. You are not alone. And for the last several years, Willow has carried that message into the prisons and jails of Illinois through our annual Christmas prison packs. And the gratitude that we receive back, it's unprecedented to anything else that we do in this church. We get thousands of letters from individuals who are so grateful. But caring for the incarcerated stretches well beyond the Christmas season. Through dedicated pen pals, weekly prison and jail visits, ongoing family support, and re-entry ministries for those who have been released. They have a saying in prison that if you ain't got mail, you ain't loved. I've written some people who have said, this is the first card I've gotten ever. I want them to feel and know and hear that Jesus loves them, that no matter what they've done in their past, they are worth being loved. Paul said, remember the prisoner as though you're there with them. If you have no clue what they're going through or how they even got there, I don't know how you can remember them as though you're with them. I don't care what the temperature of the season is outside. It's cold. Everything is hard. It's gray. I've never gone inside where Jesus wasn't there waiting. I mean, his presence is more palpable there than anywhere else. I am all week long, and what he does is awesome. The toll that incarceration takes on a family is tremendous because you have a feeling like you have lost control and it is very traumatizing at first um, until you really get into a place where you have support systems. And I think that's where prison ministries come in. Once one person in the family is incarcerated, everyone in the family is incarcerated. And uh, so that's why, you know, we want to pay attention to the families as well. For members of a church who know that a family is going through this process, embrace them, love on them, do not stigmatize them. People coming out of prison, they generally don't have a plan. They don't have access to a network of friends when things go bad. So if we as a church and as believers aren't stepping in to fill that gap, you know, who is going to do that? They're starting their lives usually from ground zero. They need a community to help them get jobs, help them um, just have uh, food on the table sometimes. If you have been previously incarcerated, you may have a um, you may have a little bit of a fear of opening up and letting yourself be known to other people. Restart's a, a close knit group of people. All of us have messy backgrounds. I think our key thing is knowing that they're important to the Lord, that God loves them, and that we care about them and love them too. The classic Matthew 25 is, did you visit me while I was in prison? And I have to look at that and, and say, I have to do that. I have to care. I want you to know. I want you to know. I want you to know. I want you to know that you are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. You